Why has DeepSeek surprised so many people in Silicon Valley? Among the numerous innovations that happen daily in the US, this is a very ordinary one. The reason they are surprised is that this is a Chinese company. By joining their game as an innovation contributor. After all, most Chinese companies are accustomed to following rather than innovating. But in the Chinese context, this kind of choice is also overly luxurious. Large models are a capital-intensive game. Not all companies have the resources to focus solely on research and innovation without prioritizing commercialization first. The cost of innovation is certainly not low. The past inertia of adopting foreign ideas without innovation was also related to the national conditions of that time. But now, if you look at it, whether it's China's economic scale or the profits of major companies like ByteDance and Tencent, they are quite substantial on a global scale. What we lack in innovation is certainly not capital, but rather confidence and the ability to organize high-density talent to achieve effective innovation. Why do Chinese companies, including well-funded major corporations, so easily prioritize rapid commercialization as their top priority? Over the past 30 years, we have focused solely on making money while neglecting innovation. Innovation is not entirely driven by commerce, it also requires curiosity and a desire for creation. We are merely bound by the inertia of the past, but it is also a temporary phase. But ultimately, you are a commercial organization, not a non-profit research institution. If you choose to innovate and then share it through open source, where will the competitive moat be formed? In the face of disruptive technology, a competitive moat built through closed-source approaches is short-lived. Even if OpenAI adopts a closed-source approach, it cannot prevent being surpassed by others. That's why we focus on embedding value within our team. Our colleagues grow in this process, accumulate a wealth of know-how, and build an organization and culture that fosters innovation, this is our competitive moat. Open-sourcing and publishing papers don't actually result in any loss. For technical professionals, being followed and recognized is a highly fulfilling achievement. In fact, open source is more of a cultural act rather than a commercial one, giving is actually an additional form of honor. What do you think of market fundamentalist views like those of Xiaohu Zhu? Xiaohu Zhu is self-consistent, but his approach is more suited for companies focused on making quick profits. If you look at the most profitable companies in the U.S., they are all high-tech companies that emerged and thrived later on. But in developing large models, pure technological leadership alone is unlikely to create an absolute advantage. What is the bigger thing you are betting on? What we see is that China's AI cannot remain in a follower position forever. We often say that China's AI lags behind the US by one or two years, but the real gap lies between originality and imitation. If this doesn't change, China will always be a follower. That's why some explorations are inevitable. NVIDIA's leadership is not just the result of one company's efforts, but the collective effort of the entire Western technology community and industry. They can foresee the next generation of technological trends and have a roadmap in hand. The development of AI in China also requires such an ecosystem. Many domestically produced chips fail to develop because of the lack of a supporting technology community, relying only on second-hand information. Therefore, China inevitably needs people to stand at the forefront of technology. Overseas, people believe that DeepSeek has hired a group of enigmatic geniuses. So, what kind of people are behind the creation of DeepSeek? There are no enigmatic geniuses. They are all recent graduates from top universities, PhD interns in their fourth or fifth year, and some young professionals who graduated just a few years ago. Many large model companies are obsessed with recruiting talent from overseas. Many people believe that the top 50 talents in this field may not be in Chinese companies. Where do your team members come from? The V2 model does not include people who have returned from overseas, they are all domestic. The top 50 talents may not be in China, but perhaps we can cultivate such talents ourselves. I heard that you are very skilled at recruiting based on details, allowing people who excel in non-traditional evaluation criteria to be selected. 
Our selection criteria have always been passion and curiosity, so many people have unique experiences, which is quite interesting. Many people have a stronger desire for research than concern for money. The emergence of this divergent sensitivity is closely related to the structure of your fully innovative organization. But does the frontier exploration of AGI, which is full of uncertainty, involve too many management actions? DeepSeek is also entirely bottom-up, and we generally do not enforce division of labor, but rather let it happen naturally. Everyone has their own unique growth experience and comes with their own ideas, so there's no need to push them. During the exploration process, when he encounters a problem, he will naturally pull people in for discussion. However, when an idea shows potential, we also allocate resources from the top down. Is innovation, to a large extent, also a matter of chance? I believe innovation is first and foremost a matter of belief. Why is Silicon Valley so innovative? First, it dares. When ChatGPT was released, the entire country lacked confidence in pursuing cutting-edge innovation. From investors to big tech companies, everyone felt that the gap was too large and decided to focus on applications instead. But innovation first requires confidence. This confidence is usually more evident in young people. Most Chinese companies choose to focus on both models and applications. Why has DeepSeek currently chosen to focus solely on research and exploration? Because we believe that the most important thing right now is to be part of the global wave of innovation. For many years, Chinese companies have been accustomed to others driving technological innovation while they focus on applying and monetizing it. But this is not something to be taken for granted. In this wave of innovation, our starting point is not to seize the opportunity to make a quick profit, but to advance to the forefront of technology and drive the development of the entire ecosystem. Now that the economy is entering a downturn and capital is in a cold cycle, will this further suppress original innovation? I don't necessarily think so. The adjustment of China's industrial structure will rely more on hardcore technological innovation. When many people realize that making quick money in the past was likely due to luck in the era, they will be more willing to commit to genuine innovation. Can technology really create a significant gap? You've also said that there are no absolute technological secrets. Technology has no secrets, but replication requires time and cost. NVIDIA's graphics cards, in theory, have no technological secrets and are easy to replicate. But reorganizing a team and catching up with the next generation of technology takes time, so the actual competitive moat remains quite wide. The internet and mobile internet have left most people with a habitual perception that the US excels at technological innovation, while China is better at applications. We believe that as the economy grows, China should gradually become a contributor rather than merely a free rider. Over the past 30 years of the IT wave, we have hardly participated in true technological innovation. We have become accustomed to Moore's Law, where better hardware and software arrive effortlessly every 18 months. But in reality, this was tirelessly created over generations by Western-led technology communities. We simply didn't participate in the process before, which led us to overlook its existence. You are also optimistic about domestic original innovation. I grew up in a fifth-tier city in Guangdong in the 1980s. My father was a primary school teacher. In the 1990s, there were many opportunities to make money in Guangdong. At that time, quite a few parents came to my home, basically believing that studying was useless. But looking back now, the mindset has changed because making money is no longer easy. Even opportunities like driving a taxi may no longer exist. Things have changed within a single generation. Hardcore innovation will become more prevalent in the future. It may not be widely understood now because society as a whole needs to undergo an educational process. When society starts to reward and celebrate those who achieve success through hardcore innovation, collective thinking will shift. We just need more concrete examples and time for this transformation to unfold.